Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union. Once again under extraordinary circumstances caused by the lockdown due to the COVID-19 virus. We're joined by General Secretary Matt Rack down the line via a video conference facility and this time we're going to put members' questions to the General Secretary. Questions that have come through our frequently asked questions facility on the website. So Matt, thanks for joining us. Um, here's the first of the questions that's been put to us. It's from a whole time firefighter and it says this. My service is currently reporting the amount of firefighters that are off with COVID related sickness or under self isolation. But are these figures getting collated on a UK wide basis? Can you answer that one first, please, Matt? Well, Tam, we are uh, we are trying to collate those figures uh, through our local officials. And it clearly is having a, an impact. We, we estimate there's something like 3,000 firefighters across the country are off work currently due to COVID-19 and self-isolation. So already that is having a significant impact in a number of uh, fire and rescue services. And the figures appear to be worse in emergency fire control. So it's clearly something we need to monitor. Uh, and I know fire and rescue service management will be, but we also need to monitor uh, as things develop. Uh, yeah. Those are the those are the figures we've got so far. Okay, Matt. Well, the second question again is in relation to firefighters going off work, uh, and it says this: We are losing a lot of crews under self isolation. This is because testing appears to be unavailable. Why is that? And is the union doing anything to resolve it? Well, Tam, testing is a huge issue for us. Uh, we have raised this for several weeks now uh, with the. Uh, governments in the different parts of the UK with employers and with the national employers and the National Fire Chiefs Council. So we're trying to pursue the issue of testing. It seems obvious to us that if you've got any system of uh, key workers, as they're called, so starting with the NHS, starting with the people working in uh, operating theatres, uh, ITUs and so on, um, and then but anyone working in the health service, then other public services required to carry on working and engage with the public, but then everyone required to work uh, in some way. That could be people delivering, working in supermarkets or delivering uh, supplies to people's homes. Everyone who's required to work, there should be a system of testing across the board uh, and starting with prioritising with health workers, clearly. So we have raised that. I think there are some uh, failings in policy in that regard because clearly there may be people who are unnecessarily self-isolating because they could be tested and returned to work. So staffing may be reduced as a result of that. Or there may be people who have the virus who are at work. Uh, both of those reasons, the, the uh, issue of testing is absolutely fundamental. We're, we're chasing this up with politicians as we speak. We're pursuing it with the National Fire Chiefs Council. We have a national officer, uh, Ricardo Latorre, is, is leading on that issue for us. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, issue further information as soon as we can. OK, Matt, clearly a lot of work going on there. The other one I have to say is a very common question that's been coming through. It's from RBS members um, and it's related like this. Um, I'm an RBS firefighter. My full time employment is under threat. And with the lockdown, my FRS pay has fallen substantially. Is the union raising this issue? A very common question, Mark. Yes, Tam, I think we're, we're very aware of the challenges facing retained firefighters at the present time. Uh, and it may come from different angles. So firstly, in terms of their primary employment, they may be under threats there, as in, in the case of the question. Uh, and secondly, their earnings in the fire and rescue service may be affected. So in terms of their primary employment, uh, many of them are members of other trade unions in their primary work. And they should approach their trade union there to see what support is put in place, including the support, various support mechanisms from the government. Likewise, they should seek advice if they are self-employed and uh, business is, is suffering as a result of the crisis. In terms of the fire and rescue service, again, earnings may be affected because of the reduction in outside activities such as home fire safety checks, fire safety, uh, community fire safety activities and so on. These are all issues we are aware of and seeking to address. We know that there are now new areas of activity that services are taking on under the national agreement. And I know that services are considering retained firefighters in, in that regard. So we are exploring it. We'll issue information as soon as we can uh, get it. I understand the concerns that our retained members have. Right, thanks for that. The next one is in regards specifically to control. 
Um, I'm in emergency fire control, and my FRS has talked about using us to answer ambulance service calls. Is this allowed? Well, Tam, we have a national agreement for any additional roles or functions, and there's a mechanism within that national agreement by where, whereby any fire and rescue service can feed in suggestions. So that clearly would be a new area of work. It shouldn't be happening simply at a local level. Uh, any fire service, any employer who wants to suggest additional roles in the current situation should raise that either through the national employers or through the National Fire Chiefs Council. We then have a tripartite mechanism by where, whereby we can discuss those. And if the correct mechanisms are put in place and it's suitable and appropriate, then those can be signed off. And we're aware that a number of those already have. So that shouldn't be raised at local level. It should be raised at a national level. OK, Matt, and now the final question in this current series of questions, and it's from a whole time firefighter saying this. Our BA daily checks have been altered because the service says there is a lack of cleaning fluid. Is the union aware of this? And if so, what is being done? So clearly a change in the way that firefighters are testing breathing apparatus because of an apparent lack of cleaning fluid, Matt. Well, firstly, no, you know, BA tests are a, an essential safety mechanism to protect our members. Uh, and clearly, account needs to be taken of COVID-19. Uh, secondly, the normal health and safety structures should still be in place in individual fire and rescue services. So no change should be taking place on any safety matter such as that without discussion and consultation with the union. So if that's not taking place, then that needs to be addressed. There is no excuse for principal management teams to alter safety measures without those discussions. And there is no uh, agreement that normal safety structures, such as the Joint Committee for Health and Safety, should cease functioning. Clearly, we have to do it in different ways, but it should carry on functioning. Uh, and the alarming thing about this story, which we are picking up now, is this question of a reduction in supplies of cleaning fluid for breathing apparatus sets. Because it strikes me that uh, if that's the issue behind the, uh, any such changes, then it's one that could very easily be addressed. We're putting firms on to producing ventilators for the health service. It seems to me quite easy to create uh, the, the support mechanism whereby we can produce more cleaning fluid for BA sets uh, for an essential frontline emergency service like ours. So we are taking that up and we'll issue further information as soon as we possibly can. Matt, thanks very much for that. That's the last of the questions for now. Well, look, I hope you can see that the union has undertaken um, an awful lot of work on behalf of members. And we're determined to get the questions that you send in answered, so please keep sending them in. There's now a special email address for you to do so, and that's firefighter at fbu.org.uk. It's on the screen now. If you send in your questions, we'll collate the common last ones and continue putting them to the general section via these video updates. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, thanks and thanks, Matt. Thanks very much, Tam. Thanks, everyone.